Welcome back. In the previous video segment, we had seen how to design an encoder circuit. And now in this session, we shall see how we can design a syndrome calculation circuit. Now let us assume that V is the transmitted code and let R be the received code. Now what is the difference between the transmitted code and the received code? Now the transmitted code and the received code would be the same if there are no errors. Else, if there is an error, then the received code would be the error plus the transmitted code. So therefore, when we get the received code, the received code should be one among the two power k valid code vectors. If not, it indicates that there is an error. So now we need to design a syndrome calculation circuit such that we would be able to identify a single bit error and also correct it. So now let us see how we can design a syndrome calculation circuit in this lecture session. Now V of X be the transmitted code and let R of X be the received code. So therefore R of X is the received code word. Now we do not know whether it is an error. If there is an error then it would be different from the transmitted code. Now the received code R of X is divided by G of X. Now when I divide R of X by G of X, I get the quotient pol polynomial Q of X plus S of X by G of X. Now G of X is the generator polynomial and S of X happens to be the syndrome polynomial which is of degree N minus K minus 1 or less. So now we also know that R of X is V of X plus E of X where V of X is the polynomial of the transmitted code and e of x is the error polynomial. Now let me divide this equation by g of x. So r of x by g of x is nothing but v of x by g of x plus e of x by g of x. Now v of x happens to be the transmitted code word. Now how do we get the transmitted code word? We get the transmitted code word by multiplying the data polynomial or the message polynomial with the generator polynomial g of x. Right? So the data into the generator polynomial would give me the transmitted polynomial v of x. So this is for v of x divided by g of x plus e of x by g of x. So this is what we get. So we can cancel g of x so here, R of X by G of X is now D of X plus E of X by G of X. So let me call this as equation 2. And we have called this as equation 1. Right? Now equation 1 and 2, the LHS of equation 1 and 2 are the same, which is R of X by G of X. So let me equate the RHS of both equations 1 and 2. So we get Q of X plus S of X by G of X is equal to D of X plus E of X by G of X. So we have this equation. So now we need to have the error. We need to know the error polynomial. So how do I get the error polynomial? So take this to the other side. So we have e of x by g of x is d of x plus q of x. So when I bring this to LHS, no doubt we get a minus sign, but minus of d of x is nothing but plus in mod 2. We need to remember that. So this is d of x plus q of x, and then I have this term which is plus s of x by g of x. So how do I get the error polynomial? The error polynomial e of x is multiplying this entire equation with g of x. So we get d of x plus q of x into g of x plus s of x. So we get the error polynomial here which is d of x plus q of x into g of x plus the syndrome polynomial. 
So how do we realize a syndrome calculation circuit? A syndrome calculation circuit, a generalized syndrome calculation circuit is shown here. Now these indicate the flip-flops, whereas this indicates the modular 2 adders. And we have G0, G1, G2, etc. Now this is closed if it is 1 and it is open if it is 0. So these are the coefficients of the generator polynomial. And then the number of flip-flops will always be equal to N minus K. Now since we will be considering a 7 comma 4 cyclic code, the number of flip-flops here in the syndrome, syndrome calculation circuit would be 7 minus 4 equal to 3. So I would have S0, S1 and S2. So let's take an example and let us see how we can calculate the syndrome. So we need to remember that if the received vector is an error, if the received vector is an error, then the syndrome will be non-zero. If the syndrome is zero, it means that the received vector is equal to the transmitted vector. That means there is no error. So we will take both the cases where we consider a received vector with error, where we get a non-zero syndrome. And we will also consider a received vector which does not have any error. And we will see whether we get a non-zero syndrome. Now let us consider again a 7 comma 4 cyclic code with the same generator polynomial g of x 1 plus x plus x cube. So I've been considering the same generator polynomial and the same 7 comma 4 cyclic code so that it becomes easier for us to follow throughout. Right? So here we have g of x equals 1 plus x plus x cube. So g0 is 1 which is coefficient of x power 0. g1 is 1. g2 is the coefficient of x square which is 0 and g3 is 1 which is coefficient of x cube. Now let us assume that the received polynomial is 1 1 1 0 1 0 1. So I need to verify whether the received polynomial has error or whether the entire received polynomial is correct. Now since this is a 7 comma 4 cyclic code the number of flip flops required would be 3 so I need S0, S1 and S2. So I have S0 S1 and let this be S2 and then therefore what about the values of G0? G0 is 1, G1 is 1, there is a connection, G2 is 0, so there is no connection there. So therefore the output of S1 is connected directly to the input of S2, so G2 is 0. So therefore this is open. So hence we get the syndrome output here and this is the received vector which is given which is fed to the syndrome calculation circuit. Now initially we assume that the outputs of the flip-flop S0, S1 and S2 is 0 here. So initially we assume that S0, S1 and S2 is 0. So the output is 0, 0 and 0 here. So in the first case, when we try to calculate the syndrome, we find that gate 1 is disabled and gate 2 is enabled. So the first bit which enters the syndrome calculation circuit is 1. So this is shift 1. So here it is 0. So I'm getting a 0 here. I get a 0 here. But the received bit is 1. So 1 XOR 1 1 XOR 0 is 1. So now the input of S0 is 1. 0 XOR 0 is 0. So S1 will be 0. And S2 will be 0. Okay. So now the outputs of S0, S1 and S2 would be 1, 0, 0. So again I have 0 here. So I have 0 coming here, 0 coming here. The next bit for the second shift is 0. So I have a 0. So 0 XOR 0 is 0. So S0 is 0. The output of the previous output of S0 is 1. So 1 XOR 0 is 1. And S2 is nothing but the previous state of S1 which is 0. So again we have a 0 coming here. So I get a 0 and 0. 
So now during the third shift, the received bit is 1. So I have a 1. So this bit would be 1. So we have 1 XOR 1. So let me change this. So the outputs of S0 would be 0, 1 and 0, the previous states. So I have a 1 coming here, 1 XOR 0 is 1. And then I have a 0. So 0 XOR 0 is 0. And the next state of S2 would be previous state of S1 which is 1. So now let me change the outputs of S0, S1 and S2. So now the states would be 1, 0, 1. So I have 1, I have 0 and I have 1 here. Okay. So now we have 1 coming here and here. So there is a 1 here and I also have a 1. So during the fourth shift, I have the fourth bit which is 0. So I get a 0 here. So 0 XOR 1 is 1. The previous state of S0 output is 1. So 1 XOR 1 is 0. And S2 would be 0 here. So the next state is 1 0 0. So let me change. This is 1 0 and this would be 0 here. So similarly I get a 0 and a 0. So now during the fifth shift, I have a 1 coming here. So there's a 1 coming here. So now let's see what happens if I get a 1. So 1 XOR 0 is 1. Again 1 XOR 0 is 1. S2 will be previous state of S1 which is 0. So I have a 0 here. So I get a 0, 0. So during the 6th shift again I have a 1. So now what happens? 1 XOR 0 is 1. Again I have 1 XOR 0 is 1. And the previous state of S1, I have not changed. The previous state of S1 is 1, isn't it? I actually have 1, 1, 0, the previous state. So you have S2 being 1 here. Because the current state of S2 is the previous state of S1 which is 1, 1, 1. So we have... Now, the outputs of the flip-flops are 1, 1, 1. So therefore, I get a 1 in the feedback path. And we have a 1 here too, which is the last bit during the seventh shift, which is 1. So 1 XOR 1 is 0. I get a 0 here. 1 XOR 1 is 0. But S2 is the previous state of S1, which is 1. Now, after seven shifts, we need to look into the contents of the shift register, the outputs of the flip-flops, S0, S1 and S2. If they are not zero, it's, this is non-zero, so this indicates that there is an error. Right? Now how do I detect the error? So we find that now we need to look into the H-transpose matrix. So please go through the previous video segment where we have defined the H-transpose matrix for the same generator polynomial and for a 7 comma 4 cyclic core and we have got the H transpose matrix as 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 1 So now what do we do? We need to look at the H transpose matrix and identify where 0 0 1 exists so I find that 0, 0, 1 is present in the third row. Now since 0, 0, 1 is present in the third row, it indicates that the error is in the third bit. So if the received data, so the received data is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. The error happens to be in the third bit, which is this. So we need to have an error correction. So to correct error, I XOR this with 0. So in order to correct the error, I XOR the received vector with an error correction vector which is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So since the error is in the third row, we realize that the error is in the third bit. So 
an error in the third bit means that a 1 has to be corrected and it has to be made 0. So the error vector would be a 1 in the third position and zeros everywhere else. So I get 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is the received vector. So now the received vector has been corrected and this is error free. Now let us check if this is correct. Now let us assume that if I receive this as the vector, what should happen? I should get 0, 0, 0 here. After 7 shifts, the syndrome should be 0. So do we get that? Let us check. So let us assume that the vector which is received is 1, 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1. So I have a 0 here. Right? So now let it be 1, 0, 1, 0. I would have a 0 here. Right? So now we need to check whether we get an all 0 output after 7 shifts. So we find that the data 1 0 1 0 the first four bits are one and the same so I find that the contents of the shift register will also be the same up to four up to the fourth shift right so after the fourth shift I have 1 0 0 and I have 0 coming here and a 0 coming here now I have the fifth bit so instead of 1 I have a 0 so I get a 0 here so let us perform XOR so we have 0 xor 0 is 0 then I have 1 xor 0 is 1 and of course s2 is the previous state of s1 which is 0 ok so now we have 0 1 0 as the output of the registers 0 1 0 so again I am getting a 0 in the feedback path now the input bit is 1 I have a 1 here so the input of S0 would be 0 XOR 1 which is 1 to S1 is 0 XOR 0 which is 0 and here I have S2 which is the previous state of S1 which is 1. So we have 1, 0 and 1 as the outputs of the flip flops and I have 1 coming in the feedback path so we get a 1 here. Right? So the last bit is 1 again. So 1 XOR 1 is 0. Again I have 1 XOR 1 is 0. And S2 is the previous state of S1 which is 0. So what do we observe? We observe that the syndrome is 0. So when the contents of the shift register is 0, we conclude that the received vector is correct or the received vector is error free. Okay. So this is how we can design a syndrome circuit and we can also calculate if there is an error. So if there is an error, the output of the syndrome will be non-zero and by identifying the bit sequence in the H-transpose matrix, we can identify the position where the error was present and we can also correct the error. If the received bit is absolutely correct, then the output of the syndrome would be completely zero here. So which indicates that there is no error and the received vector is correct. So this is how we can design a syndrome calculator circuit. So I hope you have found the video informative. Please do share, like and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications from the channel when videos are uploaded. And thanks for watching.